In 2016, I started a PhD in astrophysics at the Australian National University. And about three and a half years later, I found myself submitting my thesis titled The Frontiers of Cosmic Cataclysms and starting a postdoctoral fellowship position at the Science Mission Office in the Space Telescope Science Institute. So over those three and a half years, what did I learn in my PhD in astrophysics? And what might you expect to learn if you want to do the same kind of thing? When I started in 2016, I just finished my honours degree at the University of Canterbury in New Zealand. And I hadn't really done much research before, and I also hadn't done much in the way of astronomy before. So a lot of what I had to face in my PhD was going to be new. The main thing that was new and different was the need to do computer programming. Now this wasn't something that I thought would be particularly obvious when I was going through my undergraduate degree. But computer programming is essential to science these days. Not a day goes by that I don't use Python for my programming to try and understand the data that I've got. So when I started my PhD without any experience in Python, I had to learn it all from the beginning. So that's the first thing I learned in my PhD is how to program kind of all right. I wouldn't say I'm fantastic at programming, but generally it gets the job done. And if a professional programmer were to look at my code, that'd probably vomit as it's uh, hideous. So computer programming is the first thing that you need to get on terms with. The second thing you need to do, of course, is understand your research field. So my field was transients, in particular supernova. I wanted to try and understand how stars blow up, more or less. And to do this, we wanted to work on a few different projects, one of them involving designing a new telescope system to look for interesting signals from supernova. Another thing was to analyze data from the Kepler Space Telescope to find new and exciting transients no one had seen before. So when you get these two new projects, you need to catch up with what the rest of the field have been doing for the past decades. So the first few months of your PhD generally feel very slow as you slog through all of the past papers that are relevant to what you're doing and learn how to actually start doing what you need to do. But compared to an undergraduate degree, you perhaps don't learn as much. During your undergraduate degree, you learn a lot about many different things and how to apply those different things. It's much more broad. In a PhD, it's much, much more refined. So what you're learning about is pretty much specific to your discipline, what you're researching. So in some ways, perhaps it doesn't feel like you learn as much, but you become much more specialized in what you're doing. In my case, it's with explosions and analyzing data from kind of broken space telescopes. In the beginning of your PhD as well, you kind of generally have no idea what you're doing. You have a reasonable understanding. Your supervisor will give you uh, some projects to work on. But those projects are probably not as well defined as what you're used to. So you need to start scrounging around and trying to work out what you need to do to advance your project. So this is kind of the biggest aspect you learn in a PhD is how to actually do research. During your undergraduate degree, perhaps you might do a few small research projects. Those research projects will generally be pretty well defined and the supervisor will know exactly what they want to get out of you from that project. But with a PhD, it's kind of three years. So in the beginning, you're set loose. You need to work out how your work will fit into the field that you're going to be adding to. And then of course, work out how you will do your research and add to that greater body of knowledge. So as time goes on, you start to play with data and you get more comfortable with what you're doing. And then kind of near the end of the PhD for me, I started realizing that I knew what to do with data now. If I had to help uh, say an undergrad student with doing some research, I could see that I'd learn a lot more about how to do research compared to what someone who hasn't spent a few years in a PhD 
connected. And that was pretty cool, the ability to see some problem and then think through all of the ways you could address the problem and hopefully come to an answer at the end of it. Now this, I'm pretty sure, is the main point of a PhD. It's to teach you how to research. During, say, high school or your undergraduate degree, the emphasis is on trying to learn how to learn. But once you've done learning how to learn, the trick is to learn how to apply what you know to try and understand something new, something no one else has ever tried to do. And that takes quite a lot of time and quite a lot of guidance. So your PhD supervisors and your friends and colleagues will be instrumental in helping you through a PhD. And another thing you learn from a PhD is was at least surprising to me. You can't work all the time. So during my undergraduate degree and my honors degree, I worked pretty much continuously for those three years. And it was tough, no doubt about it. And going into a PhD, I had the same kind of mindset thinking. I had to work all the time to get to where I needed to go. And it's true, you need, do need to work an awful lot but it's just not sustainable for three plus years to work continuously. It took me a while to cotton on to that, but once you do, things start to get a little bit easier because you're not always throwing yourselves at a problem which you don't really know how to solve. It's better to just kind of take some time off a problem and eventually come back to it. And when you've come back to it with a fresh brain, you'll probably see something you didn't see before. This has happened to me numerous times. There are some other things you learn about presenting your research as well. So during a PhD, you'll go to a number of conferences and you'll need to present your work, be it in a poster where you need to understand how to present something visually and lay it out so that anyone can come along and read it and understand what you're wanting to do, or present it verbally through a talk. Talks are pretty common, sometimes they're a bit scary, but if you do enough of them, you start to get over that initial fear and start to perhaps even enjoy when you're giving some talks. But the biggest thing that I'd say quite a lot of researchers dislike is writing papers. And this is kind of the focus of the PhD. You do your research, but doing your research doesn't matter if no one knows what you've done. So then you need to write up your results in terms of papers, and you publish those papers. In my case, I needed three papers that had been more or less accepted into journals. And this is kind of tricky. It's its own skill in its own right, trying to write scientific papers. In some ways, you need to be uh, very formal. In other ways, you need to be entertaining and engaging because there's nothing worse than trying to slog through a completely impersonal and a rigid paper. So the objective is to get people to read what you have done and understand what it is you've done and understand the importance of why you did that thing. So learning to communicate your research is an incredibly large part of your PhD. So those are kind of all the major aspects of your PhD. Unsurprisingly, you'll learn about the field that you've specialized in. For me, it was supernova. And you'll learn about a number of other things. Perhaps most surprising to me was the time management side of things, making sure there's downtime and you're not driving yourself completely mad with work. And then there's the programming, which is crucial. So if you're wanting to do astrophysics, I'd recommend you take up a few programming courses in your undergraduate degree. But as I said before, the biggest things you learn from your PhD one is communicating your results, and two is actually learning how to do research. So if you have any questions as to what it's like doing a PhD, or if you're wondering if doing a PhD is right for you, and if astrophysics is something that you should get into, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to answer any questions that you may have. Thanks for watching.